to Minding Your Business, the show for entrepreneurs. I'm your host, June Middleton. We have really a wonderful show for you this evening. Two really delightful and very interesting entrepreneurs who have a coffee shop called Birch Coffee, right here in Manhattan at 5 East 27th Street. Great location. I am really pleased to have on the show this evening co-owners of Birch Coffee, Jeremy Lyman and Paul Schlater. Welcome to the show. I am just delighted that you could come and I am thrilled to have someone here that has a coffee shop right in the neighborhood, so to speak. So uh, please tell us, um, tell us about yourself and your business. And Jeremy, why don't you start? Um, well, thanks for having us on the show. It's, uh, oh, it's, it's really great to be here. Um, yeah, we uh, we have a coffee shop, like you said, it's on uh, in the Flatiron District of Manhattan. And um, yeah, we really we really just try to um, cater to uh, cater to the community and. Um, just uh, really foster that kind of relationship between us and um, and the people that come in every day, and uh, I think we've we've been doing a pretty good job of doing that. Um, you know, I, I I love going to work every day, which is uh, kind of a rare, I think, is a rare phenomenon. So, um, yeah. Yeah, th I don't know too many entrepreneurs who have their own shop business that don't have some degree of enjoyment going to work because there's nobody to yell at them if they come late or if they forget something and they know what they have to do so and I know that uh, it is a very well attended and traveled and um, you have a good clientele because I know we spoke today Paul and <laughs> I know. You say, oh, why is she calling me now? And <laughs> you were having a, what sounded like an absolutely crazy lunch hour. Yeah. I, I mean, is your uh, restaurant primarily um, catered to a lunch crowd, or well, is it, what are your hours? We well, uh, the the hours are on during the week. We're open from um, 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. On the weekends, from uh, on Saturday from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. and on Sunday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, we do we do have a great lunch crowd. We're, we're very very fortunate to. And it's all from the neighborhood. It's or? it's the neighborhood. Oh. Yeah, we have a, a lot, quite a bit of uh, delivery. We have, um, you know, a great deal of, of regulars who come in. You know, the 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 really cool thing is, um, you know, when we first opened, we we really were very green in in this in this. Uh, you know, we both worked in restaurants, but. Not not owning our own shop, obviously. It's a lot different from working very, for very someone different. else and having your own very, uh, very running the shop yourself. Yeah, it's and it's funny when you when you mention the 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 coming in late thing. I just th I I would love for that to be the case where yeah. we could just like <laughs> not show up. You know what I mean? But a, as it is, you know, we're we both have we're very very. We're very mindful of, of our business and of our staff, and and um, being there is it is a is a pleasure and a joy for us. And you know, as as hard of work as it is, I I just I can't imagine doing anything else at this point. How but, did sir, you How did you get started? What's your background? Are you both both uh, from New York, or did you go to school here? Or I grew I grew up in Long Island, so just outside the city. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to I went to college upstate for a couple of years, and I finished up in uh, Queens College. I mm -hmm. um, got my degree in economics, and mm -hmm. uh, like. Uh, any good person with a degree in economics, I started bartending right after that. So, oh, you know, I tried to get a job bartending because I also uh, majored in economics, yeah. but uh, <laughs> couldn't get that. But, uh. um, but that was just, you know, that I, that was, I had an immediate connection with it, and just being in the service industry and working um, in a restaurant setting, I, um, I just immediately fell in love with it. And um, I did that for a while, and then I, I left that. I worked at a mortgage company for a few years. Um, but I was always, I mean, I was just so drawn to it. And um, I mean, when I, was, when I was a kid, I was sketching floor plans to, to restaurants, which is just really wild to think back on. But um, you know, I went back, after I left the mortgage company, I went to, I worked at, um, at a bar for a couple of years while I kind of, Paul and I put this thing together. And um, 
Yeah. Yeah. And then we opened up um, October, October of 2009. So, so it's not the restaurant, the uh, shop, coffee shop, is not that old. No, oh, it's no, not. No, no, Just no. a few years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what is your background? How did you get drawn into the restaurant field? Um, I, you know, I've been working in in service since I was 15 years old. I. You know the the spark to to be a starter to be an entrepreneur has, has hit me when I was ver was a very very young well not very young but in my teens anyways uh, Jeremy knows the story very well I I tried to to convince my father when I was 16 years old to to take out a second mortgage on his house so that I could open a video game shop with oh. a friend of mine that I was actually working in a restaurant with at the time now my father in his in his very good sense declined my <laughs> my. I can't remember if I had numbers or, or what I what I brought, but I, I remember having something tangible to, to bring to him saying, This is this is such a good idea, Dad. You should really, you know, <laughs> take out another mortgage on your house oh and my invest gosh. in my wonderful idea. <laughs> and um, you know, that was that was that was a start of something. I you know it's funny, I didn't uh, I didn't I didn't really listen to that sense until a little bit later in life. I actually when I went to school, I didn't go to school for for economics or for business at all. I actually went to school for uh, for acting of all things. And um, interesting. Very much guided by my by my my folks. I have wonderful wonderful support of my family. Um, but you know, as I c came to New York and started to to audition and and um, start to work in, in in theater and stuff here, it was not and it did not feel the the passion the drive mm -hmm. that I did when I was having that those kind of those those early formative experiences. So. Well, did you work much though, uh, actually, in a restaurant or? Oh, a absolutely. Shop oh, or? I, I, I was, that's all I did. I mean, I bartended. Sorry. I bartended and waited tables. That's all I did. Yeah, come on, you kidding me? That's sorry. That's, I forgot. That's all that goes. <laughs> you know, absolutely. Yeah, no, I had I had a tremendous amount of experience doing Here that. Here in and, Manhattan. Yep, and also um, uh, also managing some different restaurants in the city as well. So that was that so was my. So you came to it with some experience. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so when did you go into shock? when you actually decided you were going to open up your own place and realized everything that was involved. Did you come up with a business plan? Or, I mean, did you oh, actually yeah. you should, write um, it out? Or I had been, I had been, I'm just buying literature and, and um, reading books on how to actually write a business plan. I didn't, I, you know, when Paul said we were very green, we were with, uh, with regards to actually opening a physical business. Um, and. I mean, we were kind of just winging it half the time and just um, doing what we thought made sense. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the the business plan was we, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just kind of, you know, took bits and pieces from other people's, you know, business plans offline and just kind of changed the wording to be what, what the concept was that we were trying to get across. But um, yeah, we we didn't really, I think we went into shock um, after we signed our lease, a nice thing that was really New York, when we Manhattan yeah. commercial lease. So that was pretty much uh, when we went into shock, and yeah. um, it was it was really nerve wracking um, because now it's there's something physical, there's something really tangible to it instead of it just being this really cool idea and concept. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden um, you're dealing with insurance issues oh, yeah. and uh, employees yeah. and. All we we were pretending. Like I, I pretended yeah, to know absolutely. what I was doing. Yep. I really did. Um, you know, then, you're not. It's not that different from a lot of entrepreneurs. Actually, a lot of people who start their own business, they start it because they have a passion or a love for doing something, but they're totally clueless when it comes right. to the nuts and bolts. I mean, this is what I deal with all the time yeah. uh, as as a business attorney. Yeah. I help people start their businesses and uh, tell them all the kinds of things that they need to know and be aware of, like. How do you have a budget? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure that must have been a shock for you as well. The money was, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know, it, it was. Yeah. We we went. We approached friends and family. Um, no, no institution would come near us. Yeah, you're a new business. Right. You have no track so, record. So absolutely. Well, and, Who's and, going and to and want to invest in I that? I think, right. and, and also really important to note is that we were we were opening. We were looking to be opening. In the the worst economy that mm. that we that we know in our lifetime, and so trying to to start something then, and then going to family saying, hey, by the way, we have this really great idea, and you know, <laughs> you kind of bring you up that you that know, you something know. though. I mean, people who have started their businesses during this time are starting to do quite well. Yeah. 
because a lot of people, because of the bad economy, sort of backed off from trying to do much of anything and certainly took dollars that they would use for marketing or development and put it someplace else to pay bills. But right. those who realize that those who hear about you during a bad time are going to really be with you and bring a lot of other people to you when things get better. And obviously, from what I heard at lunchtime today, this is what's happening to you. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would say that's especially within the last the last six seven months. I mean, as as things have really started to turn around in the economy. So when you first opened, uh, I mean, how did you did you have an opening party or an opening event or? What did you do to uh, bring the public to you? We um, besides family. Yeah, we had started. Um, we had started a Facebook page. We had started a Twitter account. Um, we had been posting Flickr photos throughout the entire construction process. Mm -hmm. um, we kept a, a blog, and so we were kind of staying on top of that. Um, but again, you know, because we were so new to all of this, we literally. Like, I remember being on the phone with my mom like that the first day that we were open. And um, I was panicking because there was, you know, maybe five people, six. Like there was, n I mean, nobody came into this. I think we we took in a, about a hundred dollars our first, our that first day much? open. Yeah. Congratulations. Which, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the grandiosity, we were thinking much, much, yeah, much sure. larger. Of, we're yeah. expecting line the line out the door. In anything. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, you know, my, my mom made that point. She said, what? She's like, what do you think? People are going to be lining down the street to come in? They, they don't know who you are. So, um, I mean, the reality now is, is very different. There is, there is a long line, uh, which uh, we're very that, fortunate that about. That is great. Yeah. Now, you also uh, have music at mm -hmm. the coffee shop, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, how often do you have music? Oh, I mean, there's always music playing. It's actually awkward when the music stops for we, more we than a minute. Live? No 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 no, 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 I mean live. Are you talking about, yeah, yeah, we, we do. We usually have between one and two performers a week. Oh, that's great. At the yeah. shop, yeah. That's great. Now, I know that you've, uh, I thank you very much for doing this. You've brought a couple of uh, your performers that uh, have appeared at your coffee shop with you this evening. S so, yeah, so Nick and Sam, they are, we have a, a blog post every Monday we post new up-and-coming artists and um, so they were a recent post of ours and uh, they're here to play some some tunes. Oh well that's great so if you just introduce them. Yeah Nick and Sam, Leland Sundry. Okay please take it away gentlemen. 